I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about deep learning. This, these words get used a lot lately. They're like uh, big data or data science. So deep learning, I want to give you a little bit of an understanding of what it is and how it's currently being used. At the heart of it, deep learning is about using neural nets. So what are neural nets? Well, they're machine learning models that are used for pattern recognition and prediction. Uh, they're pretty popular lately. And in particular, they're artificial neural nets because they were roughly based off of the brain. And I can't stress this enough. That's extremely very rough, very loose. It's not supposed to be that you really fully mimic the brain. So artificial neural nets, in terms of how they work, or let me sort of step back and say in terms of how the brain works and what we extrapolated from it, was you know you have a bunch of neurons and you have a bunch of synapses that are connecting the neurons and they are firing and sending off signals and translating data. And that, again, overly simplified, but roughly that kind of structure, that kind of model is what inspired the development of artificial neural nets. You have a bunch of nodes, they do computations on data, and they translate and they send signals to other nodes. So these, that's what a neural net, a neural net is. And this is an overly simplified version of that to give you guys a sense of sort of how to think about it. Now, not all neural nets are the same. It's a very complex structure. And thus, not all neural nets are necessarily used for deep learning. But when you talk about deep learning, you're talking about using some type of neural net. Now, what makes it different? One of the things that most people will sort of focus on is layers, the number of layers that you have in a neural net. Now that's a good way to at least give you a beginning place to start with, but it's not really the full picture. Uh, there's so much that goes into building out a neural net and making it work that there's definitely some nuances around the types of algorithms, the techniques that are being applied. Um, but I think one of the things that you can definitely take away for what distinguishes deep learning is feature engineering, automatic feature engineering. Now, what is feature engineering? Well, feature engineering is about attributes of your data, ways to describe or to break down into components your data. If you were trying to predict how fast a car goes, the attribute or the uh, component of a car in terms of the uh, seats won't necessarily tell you how fast that car is going to go. The tires might give you some indication. The engine definitely will. But those are components that can be predictive uh, and can help you determine, you know, what, what are the answers? What's, how do you answer the question you're trying to, to ask? Um, so feature engineering is about identifying the most predictive attributes of your data. And a lot of time, a lot of money goes into actually uh, finding the right features for your model. But with neural nets, they're finding that they can do automatic feature detection. And that's a huge thing. And deep learning is a, a key piece of this. So feature engineering is what makes deep learning uh, kind of a big deal. Uh, where it's being used a lot is definitely around language and image analysis. And where it's getting interesting and where the research is really starting to kind of investigate more is around what's called unsupervised learning or unsupervised modeling. So specifically, when I talk about unsupervised, and I think many people in here already understand this, is that when you work with your data to build your model, uh, you can have labeled data. You can actually know what your outcome is going to be, or you can have unlabeled data. If you have labeled data, you mean you have supervised learning. If you have unlabeled data, it's, uns it's unsupervised. We have a lot of data, obviously, and that's part of the reason why we are basically saying that we know there's outcomes we expect, and we can find some great neural nets that really deliver on those outcomes. Um, but with the unlabeled data, there's so much of it out there that if we can start to find some real patterns and some information out of it, that's where the value is, and that's where some of the excitement is for, for deep learning. So let's talk a little bit more about what neural nets are. Now, what I have up here, again, overly simplified, but this is an example of a computer vision problem that you're trying to solve. Let's say you've got a bunch of pictures, you're trying to figure out who they are. Well, the way I have this laid out here is that these blue nodes and the vertical blue nodes specifically indicate a layer. So this is an example of how to think about layers in neural nets. And each layer is looking at different types of features. And so this is actually a canonical example when people talk about neural nets and talk about deep learning. They show this example in terms of taking those pixels, breaking them down, running them through each layer. And one layer might look at the edges. 
each node representing a different edge, so like an edge of an eye or an edge of, an, of the mouth, um, while a, the next layer is looking at objects like your eye, your actual eye or your actual mouth, and each node would represent a different eye or a different mouth. And if it's getting signals from the previous layer saying, I found these edges, it's like playing a puzzle, you know, putting together a puzzle. You might say, oh, I've got this eye or I've got this mouth. And you pass it on to the final layer that says, hey, I have these faces. Each node is representing a face and I'm trying to figure out, did I find the face that I'm looking for? Did I find this person? And can I classify it as this person? I'm oversimplifying how this works, but I'm trying to give you a foundation to understand how a neural net functions so that you can go from here, basically. So this is a standard feedforward net that I'm talking you through. There are a number, of or there's other structures that exist and that are very popular, especially in the deep learning space. Convolutional neural nets are your go-to net for image analysis. They're really good at compression. Recurrent nets are great with time. Uh, we use these especially when you are doing stuff with like language, or with finance. It's a great thing to keep uh, track of your state, keep track of memory. Restrictive Boltzmann's machines are actually pretty popular when it comes to generating, trying to uh, deconstruct and reconstruct what the data is saying, what the data in includes. Um, and what you have to be aware of is that there's a number of different structures. There's a lot of variations that you can do in these structures. Uh, and one of the things that people do in deep learning is combine not only the same structures into multiple layers, but they'll do different structures together to get interesting kinds of results. Like this example, which is a deep uh, recurrent attention model, and it's combining CNNs with RNNs and feedforward nets, in essence, and the way the authors who put this together actually used it was they used it to uh, read street numbers. So that's an example of combining a lot of neural nets together in a deep learning type of model and applying it. How else are we applying deep learning? How else are we applying these kind of models? Well, you may have heard of DeepMind, and DeepMind actually applied these types of models to things like playing Atari games. Um, this was actually an interesting one that I saw that apparently the way this worked was they found from the neural net that if you took Pac-Man and you put him over the little ghost pen after he first killed them and he got another Powerball, he could actually get a lot more points pretty quickly. So anyways, we got neural nets playing some interesting games. Okay, that's great. But we also have neural nets learning Shakespeare and being able to come back and generate its own Shakespeare. Uh, Carpathy is a well-known researcher in the space and he built a neural net that generated this uh, similar prose to, Shakes to Shakespeare. We have neural nets from uh, Deep Dream generating images. And we have neural nets that are working, deep, deep neural nets that are working in our various technology that we have, like Siri or uh, Cortana, I believe. Um, they are not the only part of the problem that's, or part of the picture that's solving this, but they are definitely playing a role in terms of your ability to interact with your technology, to be able to talk to your technology. Last year in particular, there was a lot of research that came out of some of the big names like Stanford and Baidu and Google that uh, found a way to take neural nets to label pictures, not just label them to say, I found an, a cat, to actually describe what they saw in the image. This is a huge breakthrough. Uh, and one that I know they're continuing to push the boundaries on and see how far they can take it because images have been sort of a big challenge in terms of how to describe, how to search, and, and this is where neural nets, deep neural nets have been applied. But where, of course, I think is the, the go-to example for many of us at this point is self-driving cars. Now again, deep learning is a portion of how this is being built and how this is being actually you know, made possible but it is a part of the picture. It's part of the picture to allow this car to be able to observe and interact in the environment around it. And that's how deep learning is being applied to some really fascinating real world problems. Where it matters to companies is in personalization and customization. When they are able to take all the data that they're capturing on their users and make their uh, products easily automate and customize more and provide a more nuanced experience for their users or to market 
in a more nuanced way. You've all heard the example, I'm sure, from Netflix and the recommender engine. So the last things I wanted to kind of hit upon, deep learning. It's about neural nets. It's not all neural nets, but it's definitely about deep neural nets. Multiple layers, automatic feature engineering. There's more to it than that, but for the most part, I think that'll give you a place to start. Uh, it is about providing some level of automation. It is also really valuable, I think, at the end of the day, why companies will spend time, why they will be willing to invest on you doing research with deep learning is because of personalization. And where it's interesting for the researchers who are in the field is in unsupervised learning, is in the unlabeled data, and even the labeled data, and the potential of the story that it's about to tell us. So that's all I've got. I am going to be doing office hours around two if anybody has any questions. Thank you very much to O'Reilly for having me, and thank you again for listening. <laughs>